Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Canadian jazz bassist and composer Carl Mayotte on his new 2022 CD. He is recognized in the world of jazz as an exceptional musician. With his third album, he chose a different approach that he had taken on his two previous albums, where he refined each musical line at length during the writing stage. This time, the emphasis is on spontaneous composition and improvisation for a more organic and personal approach. We get into this and much more. Enjoy. So nice to speak to you again, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. And, you know, you got new material out. So I guess before we get to the new material, how have things been going as we're coming out of COVID right now? Oh, they are going very nice. Like, we have this album. Uh, we have uh, we had many shows in the, in the winter, luckily. Here in Quebec, maybe it has been more uh, severe, like the, the restriction and everything. But uh, we have managed to have maybe... Uh, 15 show in the last winter and I have a lot of uh, residency I have create new music we have record new material too so it was I think it was, uh, it was, it was a full uh, schedule uh, time so I, I, it, it was it was easy not to get uh, some uh, not to relax like it's a, it's have been busy that was the word I was searching it have been busy <laughs> Yeah, man, that's a good thing. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, people didn't see live music for so long. What are the crowds like? Do you feel that there's a difference with the crowds? And, you know, I think there's, like, many kinds of people, but mostly two kinds of people. Like, there's a people that was maybe, like, uh, that have fear of, of maybe going back for because we have, for two years, we have been, like, uh, in our homes. But there were some people that were that were waiting so much for this show and they will have so much energy so no, i think most of it it was so fun people were so happy to be back and they, they were very grateful and they give big ovation it were they have some energy a lot and a lot of energy speaking of a lot of energy and live shows and all of that good stuff and getting back to it you have a brand new cd uh escal okay escal okay i just wanted to make sure I pronounce it right. Uh, I so, don't know how do we say it in English, like when you take a flight but you wait in another city. For example, you want to go to Budapest, but you have you go to Paris before and take another flight to Budapest, for example. So how do we say it in, in English? I'm searching. Uh, yeah, layover, stopover, something like that, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about this album. If it's kind of a stopover, what does that mean for you? <laughs> uh, you know, this album... The creation of this album has been completely uh, different from my two previous. Uh, for example, it's not the same musician. First of all, uh, it was supposed to be like a more bass solo album, like I would be alone on it. But as I create the piece, I said to myself, because I'm sometimes uh, creative and I have uh, ambition, so I said, ah, oh, maybe I can put some percussion, I can put, put some other instrument, there's a harmonica too, there's a Turkish instrument called the Canon, uh, there's piano, there's many things I sing on the, on the album, so it's very rare. And the big difference too is how I compose the piece. Normally, like uh, when I compose my piece, it's a, it's a long process, and for months, be on my desk uh, composing in my head, and sometimes it can... It can create me not anxiety, but like it's very uh, stressful thing. But I love it, you know. It's uh, it's like to do some sport uh, for me. But for this album, it was more like improvisation. I play with my face. This is the way I compose. So it was more like on the moment composition. So this is the I think the biggest difference, and that's why I, I call it stopover. You know, it's like it's like a stopover in my. Uh, normal uh, way of composing music and I think you people will hear it you know it's more it's less like jazz rock fusion it's more like calm we're going like more in a vibe of ECM album and this kind of music talk to me a little bit about what you hope the audience gets from this album uh, I hope they would see another perspective of me of my music of my playing I think my bass playing is more present on this album sometime when I compose I'm not the kind of person that will compose music for bass for, for my instrument necessarily to shine more than other. Uh, in my band, maybe I'm the one that has less solo in a show. Not that I can't. Uh, but 
And in this album, it's the contrary. Like my bass was the m core of the music, so there's more present on it, and there's more solo, there's more everything. So yeah, I hope that people will get this, and they they will have a smile, and they will have fun. Is that kind of your general approach? I mean, this album has a different feel from your previous ones. Is that kind of what you try to do is evolve your sound and kind of experiment with things? Uh, but I think as an artist, I don't want to be in the same place, uh, like in the, s the same pattern all my life. I want to evolve, like you say. Uh, for sure, I will go back to maybe something more jazz rock, but the things that I've learned and I have taken in the album I just released now, I want to keep it with me. And I think it, it's just a, 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 a process in growing all over my life. Uh, I, I want to create uh, some uh, unique meeting between like musician or music universe that are n not normally uh, like meet. Like for example, last week I have do uh, I had I have done a, a a music show with a, a win a classical win quintet with the music of Escal. So it's the kind of me like musical meeting I want to create with my music now, and I think. The, the music on this scale can help to have this kind of meeting. I think the thing I'm noticing with a lot of these albums coming out and live music happening is that, you know, the jazz community is starting to build itself back up. How do you see the jazz community coming back stronger, you know, after all of this time away now that we start returning? I think there's there would be a lot of new album in the next year because uh, for sure many musicians... Uh, have time to create new music in the last year, so <clears throat> there will be new projects. There will be new projects from young musicians. I hope so, and I see some. And I had the chance to 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 work with a lot of of young jazz musicians, and we we will we will create a new jazz camp in the, the province of Quebec this summer. So we will meet a lot of young jazz uh, future jazz star and in the. Uh, and it, I think there's a the scene is very healthy. There's a lot of of people that found their their way in this kind of music, and there's a lot of new cats in in, U, in the USA like G. D. Beck or Domi that that are shaking things up, and it's very fun to hear and see this. Like, I think there there's a new breeze in this music, and I hope so. And I, I think it's in the uh, DNA of the style to always evolve. You know, the one thing I notice is we think about, you know, governments taking care of their people and the mental health and wellness of everybody. I've done a lot of interviews with Canadian musicians over the last few mm -hmm. years, and I've noticed how refreshing it is that your health care system, they, they give everybody health care free, and the government really gives out grants for people to make albums. I think it's putting their money where their mouth is. They're very... I think a lot of governments try to say, yeah, we do these things for our people. But Canada, they really do show that, especially for the artist community. Oh, totally. And uh, I'm lucky, like, I live in Canada, but I live too in, in the province of Quebec that is uh, that help a lot of, of his artists too. So we have, like, two uh, two possibilities of grant. There's grant for traveling. There's grant for many things. It, it's uh, sometimes when you start to do grants, it's hard because it can be it's easy to to get lost in all the terms and everything. But once you you get up to it, so and you understand more, there there's money there, and for sure they, I have help for many of my album from this kind of grant, and I'm very happy. And especially in the in the during the pandemic, uh, the pandemic, uh, like all the government the the government give help financially to many people and i think it saved a lot of people's life and it gives chance to some musicians just to compose and continue to create new cultural content so that is great yeah i think it's wonderful and i just wish that there was levels of that that existed across the board for musicians because just not having to worry about health insurance and all of that I know exactly it's huge very huge but again, Carl, man, thank you for reaching out. I really enjoy the music. I'm looking forward to putting it on the show. So I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. And uh, thanks again. Uh, thank you.
so much to you, my friend, and uh, keep, keep me in touch uh, with when the interview uh, will be out. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Canada, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Carl for his time, music, and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. And for all things Joe Domino, go to joedomino.com. And if you feel like it, you can donate a little bit to Neon Jazz via Patreon or PayPal. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.